before we're going to go into the word of God and just kind of draw a couple principles from the word of God I want us to remind us of our vision why we do what we do the testimonies that you just seen we play testimonies not just for the sake of testimonies we play for this uh, we don't play only for the sake of you receiving faith and being encouraged which this is a big part because you don't know you know Lewis's favorite line is that you don't know what to ask for unless you know what's available right you don't know to ask for healing if you don't know if it's available unless you see that God can heal from all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases that God can come through in any kind of situation that God can save any kind of a person you will not have faith and perseverance and hope to believe for your case or for the case of your relatives friends or people that you're praying for so testimonies that we play they have a a twofold um kind of a twofold meaning or reason why we do it first is that so your faith can be built so when you encounter hardship in your life when you encounter troubles in your life you have faith to believe that God has done it for that person God has done it for that person and that person and that person he can do it for me I'm no different and second reason why we play such a testimonies is so that we could have a clear vision and clear sight of where we're going and how we're going to get there so that we can see a clearly what the vision of our church and what we're going for we are not just going for um just to have a regular church service just to do from 10 to 12 10 to whatever and do our check mark and just leave we are striving we are believing we are going for for greater things and these are the things that we see these are the things that we're going for we are going for to see people getting healed every single service people being set free every single service people getting saved every single service that incurable diseases every single service that we have will be healed will, people will be set free from all kinds of nightmares all kinds of difficulties in their life and people will receive breakthrough and will live in the blessings of God that has that he has for us this is the reason why we watch such a testimony so that we can align ourselves to the will of God so that we can so that make sure that over time we don't lose our focus and our vision and that we strive to get where God has in store for us amen church the vision of our church um, immediate vision of our church is to see a thousand people in our church is to see that on Sundays we have three or four different three four five different flows that our services will start on a nine eleven at one and then an evening service so that we see many people uh, many people saved in our church and I want us to keep that in mind I want us to keep that vision I want us to see that we will have right now as we have 20 30 home groups that we will get to the place in the new term that we're going to have 300 home groups that uh it's not going to be just one board barely filled but we're going to have five or six boards that are going to be filled with leaders with strong men and women of faith people that have a vision people that have a fire people that have compassion people that love God and love people this is our vision church and this is where we're going and this vision requires you it requires your involvement it requires your dedication this vision does not work without you and me and so but a long-term vision a long-term vision says we're gonna see our church being tens of thousands of people we're gonna see we're gonna have a big great building and not only that going beyond ourselves this is not going to be just a church but this is a movement that we're working towards we will see many many pastors rise up in this place leaders rise up in this place worship leaders rise up in this place that they will go into different cities different states even different countries open the churches and continue on the mission and the call of God that God has not just for our church but for all the churches and for the movement that God has in store for our lives amen I want to tell you that this vision requires you it requires your involvement it requires your passion your love for God and your love for people you have to understand that this vision is not for the sake of vision this vision is not for the sake of good news church and because pastor Vasily and pastor Vlad came up with such ambitious vision so we all have to get on board for it this vision is uh, is there because this vision is big and great and th this vision requires all of us because there is a demand for this vision it's not because we want to achieve fame and glory that all comes as a response 
to the call and to the vision just like there is a demand for medicine and doctors this is it's a it's a given it's inevitable demand that you can't just escape the world has a shortage of medicine and good doctors so there is a demand today in this world for people like you and me that can rise and answer the call of God to begin to mentor people begin to witness begin to share the gospel begin to pray for people begin to cast out demons begin to help people in their life in their situation you have to understand that everything big starts little don't be intimidated by the size of your home group don't be intimidated by the size of our church don't be intimidated by the size of your beginnings because every great man and women of God started with small started insignificant every great company in the world today that we see started out of garage started out of the basement started small don't be afraid to start small you might have a great vision burning in your heart you might have these dreams and visions and even that wishful thinking to become someone great but you say how am I going to achieve it how, how am I going to get that there is no way I'm a nobody I don't have the connections I can't do this that I don't have these certain skills you have to not be afraid of a big vision of great goals because everything great everything big starts with little say everything big starts with little and so if we answer the call of God in our lives God will arrange our way for us to achieve the things that he has called us to achieve amen I want us to uh, look at four stages of personhood and we're going to talk more a bit about you becoming a mentor you becoming a leader you taking a step to become an answer to this world to the demand that this world has first stage that we see in life is a stage of a baby one thing about baby a characteristic about baby is a baby is completely dependent on its parents the baby is completely dependent and needs to be taken care of there are people here and we were going to discuss these four stages there are people here that are in these four categories there are people here that just barely got saved and they're really they're really babies in a Christian walk with God in their relationship with God and they need to be taken care of they need spiritual parents they need spiritual guidance they need to be spoon-fed if I can say that they need to be guided and we need people God requires people God needs those people that will take on that responsibility of being a parent and taking a baby and maybe if you just came to church and you feel like oh man there's so much to learn so many things to do you know it gets intimidated you see people that know so much don't you worry about it it's normal to start off as a baby it would be weird if a person got you know if a child is born and starts running around they just pray for deliverance uh, so the point is that it's okay to start out the baby it's okay to start out being needy it's okay to start out being dependent on somebody so if you got saved here recently uh, last couple of weeks a month or so you first thing that you need to do is you need to find spiritual parents meaning you need to find leaders you need to find mentors you need to get plugged in in the home group so that you can begin to grow in God you can begin to grow in character you begin to grow in your destiny that God has for you amen second stage is youth youth we can characterize youth as that they're starting to take care of themselves but they still need to be watched over youth sometimes they get rebellious they're trying to discover who they are youth is a stage and a season in life where character gets developed so as you're going to begin to grow in God those those of us that are home group leaders, those of us that are, that are going to become leaders, we have to understand that as a person gets stronger in Christ, they go through school of leaders, they get that our job as, who, as, as, uh, as home group leaders, our job as mentors is not to just abandon them after three or four months that they got saved and feel like oh they got it all together, finally they got the basic doctrines of the Christianity, you know they learn how to pray a little bit, they learn how to read the Bible and just abandon them. No, we need to be just like parents of the youth, they they take on a little bit different role and they teach them how 
to teach teenagers how to start taking care of themselves how to begin to be more independent and and they guide them they watch over them now they don't control every step of their way but they guide them and watch over them this is a stage where their character begins developing and so maybe some of you are on that stage where you feel like you know your 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 mistakes are being pointed out every single day every time you meet with your leader you know there's new thing that you got to work on be patient you have to go through this stage where your character is being developed this is stage of youth where you are growing there are growing pains involved third stage is a stage where you become a man or become an adult this is stage is where you become independent when you become completely independent and you can begin to take care of yourself now a, your your leader and your pastor doesn't have to remind you hey make sure you read the bible he doesn't have to remind you hey make sure that you spend uh make sure you spend time in prayer make sure you tithe make sure you um reach out to others you become a person that you are able to take care of yourself you are an independent person and you're a person that is able um to provide for yourself and so I want to speak to those people and I know we have quite a few of those people that find themselves in this category. You've been coming to church for six months or longer uh, and you kind of came to the place where for most part you don't need to be reminded to read your Bible. You don't need to be reminded uh, to pray. You don't need to be reminded to come to church. You kind of got those things down. You're already somewhat independent. Um, you already on your own begin to pick up some different books you listen to different podcasts and um, you are able to take care of yourself and congratulations you've gotten mature you've gotten to this point there's more growth for you to do this is not the last stage but I want to talk to those people and I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you to go to the next step next step is fatherhood or father being a father this is a step when you're able to take care of yourself and not only that you are able to take care of others see all of us in life we grow up physically we, we, we uh, physically we go through these stages and um, so is physically uh, so is spiritually and mentally we also must go through these stages and it's sometimes it's sad to see where person physically gets to the stage of fatherhood but they're still acting like a child emotionally mentally there's they, they, they haven't grown they haven't gone through the stage where they matured when they allowed people to work on their character they have not even become a man where they can begin to take care of themselves and they become and but they're already physically they're already fathers and it's devastating people suffer family suffers kids suffer because 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 of these things because a father plays more video games than a child himself okay that just shows that they that that, that a person has not develop hasn't gone through the stages and so these qualities don't really necessarily relate to our age because a person can be in their youth in their teenagers but they can already be mentoring somebody they already can be helping somebody to get uh, uh to get stronger with God to, to to challenge them so these don't necessarily relate to their age they relate to emotional mental and spiritual uh development and so those of us that are have been in a church coming to church or you've been Christian for some time and maybe you came from another church and and you know you you feel like this is your home this is a place where you can be plugged in be involved I challenge you and I encourage you and I implore you is that let's begin to move from stage to stage let's begin to come from a stage of youth into an adulthood into manhood let's begin to if you're on that stage let's not stop there let's go further let's begin to help people to get to the place where they're at where you're at you know a lot of the biggest excuse people have those that have been coming to church for some time for six months or a little bit longer and they already got a little bit established in their walk with God uh, the biggest excuse people have is well I don't know as much as Pastor Vlad as Pastor Vasila I don't know as much as these leaders I don't have answers to everything I don't feel like I'm qualified the thing is is that you don't have to be qualified and what is qualification really we're constantly growing all you need to do is to be to help people to get to the level at least where you're at if God sets you free from drugs 
help other people share your testimony help them to get to the place help them to guide them in the direction where, where, where God can use you to help them to be set free from drugs God set you free from certain addictions from low self-esteem God God healed you God helps you to abandon your bad friends and bad company and now your life is progressing and going and moving forward help others to do that and as you help others to do that God will put people in your way God will challenge you God will give you grace to grow up and to move on to the next stage in life a lot of times people uh, come uh, uh, to me and uh, sometimes people especially those that have been in church for some time they come and say well I have been I feel like I'm stuck I feel like I can't pray I feel like I can't read the Bible there's no motivation I can't move forward and just feel like I'm just stuck in my relationship with God usually the answer is and, and and I begin to point out to them is that you stop serving you stop helping others to grow in Jesus you you lost the passion to help others to grow up and begin to uh, get to the place where you're at and I challenge them to begin to serve once again to begin to find people that they can put a life into and next thing you know they're next thing you know that I hear the reports from them is that you know they got their passion back they got their excitement for life back they got their prayer life back they got their motivation to read the bible to begin to uh you know just just this life and fulfillment came in life is because when we get stuck at the youth level or we get stuck in a place where we just became mature it's all about us we will quickly begin to stagnate and regress we're gonna get to uh, uh, go backwards but if we're gonna go further if we're gonna go into the fatherhood stage when we begin to pour our lives out we will receive a deep satisfaction and God will help us in our lives amen um the the references for scriptures I'm just gonna put up on the screen and you guys can take um take a look at them at home it's John 17 from 6 to 19 our you don't have those okay uh, John uh, so if you can write it down John 17 for verses 6 to 19 and 1st Samuel 1 21 through 22 so first scripture is a prayer of Jesus it's right before Jesus is going to be crucified and be uh, leave this earth Jesus is praying for his disciples and Jesus is saying to, to the father that I have kept all of them that you've gave me that I have done everything that I can I revealed my I revealed you to them I've given what you've given me I gave it to them I know all of us here that we want to be like Jesus we want to mimic Jesus we want to uh, be more like Jesus this is the goal of Christianity really this is the goal of us Christians is to be more like Jesus and here we see Jesus is about to leave this earth and he's praying to the father said father I'm giving them back to you what you've given me He's saying that I've given that word that you've given me, I'm giving it to them. That I said everything that you told me to do, I told them to do. Everything that you've given me, I'm giving them. I'm wondering today that uh, most of us are, are ready and we're, uh, we're able, we have things that God has given us. Can we pray the same prayer that Jesus prayed and said, Jesus, everything that you've given me, you've given me a revelation, I shared it with somebody. You've given me a testimony, you healed me, I, I, I shared it with somebody. You set me free, I shared it with somebody. God, I pray for this and this and this person because I've done all that I can. I've shared the gospel with them. Could you please take them and do what you can do now with them? This is the goal of us as a Christian. Every single day to be able to be able to come to God, say, God, yesterday, I've done all that I can. I've talked to this person. I've talked to that person. I discipled this person. I consolidated these people in my home group. Could you now please do what I can't do? Could you please now touch them? Could you please lead them? Could you please change their lives? We must do what we have to do. You have to understand that discipleship and mentorship is not up to Jesus. It's up to us. Jesus said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say that go and I'll make the disciples and you take care of them no it's an opposite you go make the disciples and then like Jesus says God I've done everything you can here are there for you here are there for your service our job as Christians is to raise other people up to become a mentor become a leader raise people up and then present them to Jesus say Jesus I've done everything you can now please use them for your service and then we see Jesus leaves disciples they kind of backslide a bit but they kind of find their way back and now we are where we are at because 
Jesus poured into the 12 and now Christianity is the largest religion in the world. Don't underestimate small beginnings. Every person that you come in contact impact their life. Somebody said that when you come in contact with a person leave them better than you found them. So um, um, and the scripture second scripture of Samuel is that when God when uh, Hannah she was barren and she didn't have a child and she asked God, God if you give me a child I'll dedicate it for you. But interesting thing is that first she in uh, verse um, 21 and 22, first she raised the child to a certain age and then she gave it to God for the service. When new believers come to church, when new people get saved, it's our responsibility to nurse them, to raise them up, to make them disciples and then so that they can be of service to God. It's our responsibility. Say it's my responsibility. Say it's my responsibility to raise a disciple for Jesus. Now four things, four reasons why we should take on a role of mentorship, why we should be a leader, why we should have a home group and why we should impact and pour our lives into people. First reason. Number one is that there is a great need for you there is a demand for people like you yes you the one that still has issues yes you the one that still has uh, some mistakes that you're making yes you the unperfect one the one that you feel like it's not qualified Jesus uh, sorry not Jesus the world and Jesus has a need of you Matthew 9 37 says the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few it's not that there's not enough people to be saved. It's not that enough people, there's not enough people to be impacted. Jesus said it's ready. It's, it's, it's actually desperately asking, wanting. He said it's just not enough people that say, yes, Lord, here I am, send me and go and do the job. First reason why we must become mentors, why we must become people that take on a fatherhood role and begin to mentor and pour into others is because this world is sick and dying. This world is corrupt. There is sin abounds in this world. There is pain and suffering and you have the answer. It's like a doctor that's sitting on HIV vaccine or on cancer vaccine and never distributing and dying with it. Knowing that he has the answer to such a big epidemic and problem in the world. Well let me tell you cancer and HIV and all other incurable diseases have nothing, have nothing on the problem that people face on inside with their heart and their emotional issues and their eternity at stake. No doctor, physical doctor can fix a soul and can't fix somebody's eternity. But you and me carry the answer for eternity. We can impact somebody's lives for eternity. It will depend, some lives of people will depend on us whether they're going to be for eternity with God or eternity condemned without God. It's our responsibility. It's my job and it's your job and God is looking for people like you and me to answer the call. Reason number two is that we owe it to God. Apostle Paul says in um, Romans chapter 1 from verse 14 and 16, he says that I am in debt to preach the gospel to Gentiles and to Jews. Why Paul? Why do you say that you're in debt? It's because he realized that God saved him, that without God he was nobody and that God by his mercy reached out and changed his life and he says how can I not do the same thing and return the favor what God did for me. Think about it. Somebody went out of their way to reach you Somebody went out of their way to pray for you. Somebody went out of their way to invite you to church. Somebody went out of their way to bless you, to speak a good word for you. It's your responsibility to return that favor. It's your responsibility. God saved you by His grace. You owe it to God and you owe it to people. You're in debt to preach the gospel. Number three, life is too short and eternity is way too long. Bible says in Matthew 6 19 and 20, do not stir up the treasures on this earth because this treasure, thieves can rob it, mow, uh, 
Uh, moth can eat it. Um, anything can happen with it. But stir up treasures in heaven which nobody can steal from you. You have to understand regardless it's all good. It's all good that we are striving and reaching to achieve best things in life. To live in a great house, big house, expensive house, to have a nice car, to have great things in life. It's all good and God wants to help us with it. It's all good to have really nice things, to dress really nicely, to have prestige in life, to have influence and, 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 and have uh, great influence in life. It's all those, all of these things are great and God desires us to have those things. He wants us to be on top and not the bottom. He wants us to be the head and not the tail. He wants, to, he wants us to lend to the nations, not just, hey, here's 20 bucks, you know, give it to me later. Lend to the nations and to never borrow. It's God's desires for us to be in the top. But you have to understand, we have to keep the main things the main thing. We have to keep the perspective. We have to understand that this life is way too short. And this life is not even a dot on a scale on a line compares to eternity. We have to understand is that when they bury us six feet under, we can't take our family with us. We can't take our kids with us. We can't take our cars, our homes. We can't take our possessions. We can't take nothing with us. Only the things that we've done for Christ and the things that we've done for people that will count at the end. When we stand at the white throne of God and we begin to receive our rewards, what is God going to say to us? Is He going to say you're selfish and you're, 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 you're concentrated and you focus, you're crying about these pitiful small things that don't even matter and you wasted your eternity and so many people could have been touched by you, so many people could have been could have been saved because of you so many people could have been impacted so many widows could be comforted and helped so many orphans could have been fed and dressed if only you would have kept your focus on the main things life is too short friends whatever we do in life whatever we try to achieve in life we're all gonna leave it behind and we must focus on the main things and our point number four, uh, four it protects our life and attracts blessings to God, uh, blessings of God. In Psalm 41, 1 and 2 says this, God blesses those who are kind to the poor and helpless. He helps them out in their own troubles. He protects them and keeps them alive. He publicly honors them and destroys the powers of their enemy. A lot of people want to quote this promise for their life and 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 oh God's gonna help me to defeat my enemies God's gonna honor me God's gonna do all these great things but you have to understand a lot of the promises of God are only for those that answer his call only for those that begin to put others before themselves only for those that that say yes Lord I'm gonna be an answer to those that are dying to those that are struggling to those that are poor to those that don't have anything to eat I'm gonna be an answer to those that are sick I'm gonna be an answer for those that are oppressed and possessed by demons this promise of great blessings of God is to those that answer the call I want to tell you is that every person that genuinely goes after God serves God and serves people Every person that genuinely cares and serves other people is never in shame. Bible says, I've never seen righteous forsaken and his children begging for bread. There is provision in the call of God. There's a provision and blessing, protection and honor when we live for God and live for people. When we begin to take care of God's business, God's kingdom, God begins to arrange our ways. Somehow, somewhere, just things come together. You know, um, there was a there's a there's a one man in the village. He wasn't he wasn't any you know he was just a simple man. He was a farmer, and but everybody knew him and everybody liked him because everywhere he go, he would fix things. He would come to your house and he would swing a door or in the house or um, a gate door and he, he would hear a squeak. So he would come and, and oil it up and, and make sure it doesn't squeak. He would see something broken, he would see the fence broken, he'd come and fix the fence. He wouldn't even ask people for their permission. He would just, he would be just the kind of a man going around places and fixing things and doing what he can. He was a very simple man, didn't have much that he could offer but he offered whatever he could offer. It was his skill. At one moment in his life something happened that his house caught on fire and uh, 
all his possessions and everything got burned and so that man was devastated but because he invested his life in the other people the whole village came together and they built them a house they bought all the things that was burned down and they restored him and he had bigger better bigger house better things new things in the house they bought him a car and he was better off before than he was after why because he chose all his life he was investing in other people I want to tell you when you invest into people when you invest into the kingdom of God with your finances with your skill with your time with your effort with your smile with which is which is words of hope to others whatever you sow you shall reap God says God cannot be mocked you know I remember the story of and I've shared that and I'm just gonna quickly mention the story of of my parents you know um, when we were in Russia as missionaries um, my dad opened a rehab center for people because there's a big epidemic going on with drugs and all kinds of things and back there and we opened our home and we hosted those drug addicts as they were recovered they stole from us they literally cleaned their house out multiple times um, and some people got set free some didn't some ran off uh, they were just using us <clears throat> but uh, you know rewinding 15 years later we in our family we got a big devastation you know my my uh my brother david those of you that know his story he got strained on drugs and he just you know he went uh completely south you know he to the point he started using drugs that like he lost his mind he would talk to himself he forgot how to write he forgot how to tie his shoes i had to tie his shoes and one time when i was taking his to court and he couldn't even sign a paper on the in the court where he had to sign off because he completely forgot all these things drugs messed him up so bad you know and, and it seemed like God what is all this well, God what happened to all those things when we helped all these people God what happened what happened you know what happened to those uh, prayers that we prayed for these drug addicts this time that we took them in our house and we we fed them we clothed them and and they stole from us they robbed us and we still took care of them God what happened to all these times you know it seemed like almost seemed like all of those things were forgotten but it was not you know God used the man completely that would never even think 14 years ago some men from Africa that took on my brother David as his own son he prayed for him he mentored him he set him free by God's grace and returned him home a year later completely sane completely normal when people hear his stories they don't even believe it because he doesn't even look anything like that person he was this is exactly the scripture comes to says that that what I just read from Psalm that God blesses those who are kind to the poor and helpless he helps them out in their own troubles see just because we're Christians just because we're righteous just because God is on our side that doesn't mean that we're not gonna face troubles but God promises us that every time we'll face troubles he will rescue us he'll rescue those that rescue others I challenge you today especially those that come to our church step up to be a mentor step up to help somebody to give somebody a word of encouragement step up to to uh to change somebody's life pray for them this is the biggest thing you can do impact their life for eternity and i want to promise you one thing is that god will never leave you he'll arrange your life he'll bless your life and when you go to heaven you're gonna have your hands full of the things that you've done on, uh, on earth for him for other people and presented to god said god this is what i've done for you i lived for eternity i didn't live just for temporary things amen